This is a hognose snake, and they are becoming one of the most popular snakes in the reptile hobby, but I think they kind of suck. And I'm gonna tell you three reasons why. My name's Adam, this is Red, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Adam, I've been watching you for four years. You did nothing but hognose snake content at the beginning. Your logo is a hognose snake. How could this be possible? Well, what a great question that is. Well, I mean, if you watch these videos, you watch the bearded dragon suck, crested gecko suck, whatever other ones I've done that suck, you're gonna realize that they're kind of propaganda and pro whatever the animal is because these are really amazing pets for a lot of people not everybody though and i'm going to tell you three reasons why they might suck for you but also be warned this might make you want a hogno snake even more number three they bite and they're venomous well sort of now this is a hognose snake, and this means it's a rear fang venomous snake. And this is a Western hognose, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. There are Madagascan giants, there are tricolors, there are Easterns, which come from similar ranges in North America, but we're talking about Westerns today. Now, what I mean by rear fang venomous is that they're not a fixed fang snake. So what that means is in a lapid, something like a cobra or a viper, maybe something like that, those things will have fixed fangs or even articulating fangs, but either way, they're like hypodermic needles. And this means that those fangs are going to inject venom into the tissue that they bite. Now this is a venomous snake too, kind of. This is a rear fang venomous snake, which means that the fangs are at the back of the mouth and they can't inject the venom. In fact, it's just basically an advanced saliva that is the venom, so not quite as advanced as a true venom from a fixed fang snake, although it can be considered a true venom. Neither here nor there, they have to chew it into you. They have kind of these grooves or these smooth teeth that they chew this advanced saliva or venom into you with. And it's not medically significant to most humans. Now it depends how long they chew on you, so always get them to release if they do bite you immediately. Don't take pictures, don't wait, it's not cool, it doesn't make you more fun or a cooler keeper, it just means that you're gonna have maybe a swollen hand, a swollen arm. Those are the symptoms of a hognose snake bite if you let them latch on. If they bite and release, no issues. Now why am I making such a big deal about this? I don't know, because I have a bunch of hognose snakes and I mean, I know the ones that are gonna have a crazy food response, which is why they bite in the first place, by the way. It's very rare that a hognose snake, a Western hognose snake anyway, will bite you defensively. Generally, it's gonna be a food bite. So always know that they have a crazy food response. And if your hand is in the way, they might think your hand is food and that's why they would bite you. These are not animals that are going to be malicious. They're not gonna be scary or uh, aggressive, definitely not aggressive. They're just animals that are aggressive feeders and that's why you might get bit. But keep this in mind, the venom thing is great for clickbait and you know, I have a venomous snake, look at me. But at the end of the day, this is not really a medically significant venom to humans. It is just something to take note of. I mean, I've had hognose snakes for four years and only been bitten like a couple of times. Knock on wood. Four years? What year is it? 2023. 10 years? I've had hognose snakes for 10 years? Oh my goodness, I'm so old. Oh, also, they can be hissy and they'll mock strike you with a closed mouth sometimes. Okay, for real, let's move on. Before we move on, just a reminder that uh, all the Madagascar videos are gonna start coming out next week, so you can follow me on Instagram for some of that stuff. But I thought about it. Being in Madagascar, I realized that the effects of climate change are pretty wild and that's where Ren comes in. Today's sponsor, Ren, is a simple and effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis going on on our planet right now. Ren is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and then you can offset it by funding a whole bunch of different carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. Rainforest protection is the one that really strikes me. I'm very lucky to get to travel the planet and it turns out almost everywhere I go, rainforests are in danger or are almost wiped out. That is why I love Wren. It's simple, you go to the website, you fill out a couple questions, and it tells you what your carbon footprint is. Now, none of us are gonna be able to get to zero, but we can get as close as possible. And for me anyway, that alleviates the burden at least a little bit, knowing how much I can offset the giant carbon footprint I put into the environment. 
and you get monthly updates from the projects that you support. You go onto the website and you decide which ones you wanna fund and you know exactly where your money is going and how it's being put to work. You get photos and you get details on things like the trees that are planted if that's what you choose. Traveling the world has really opened my eyes to the climate crisis and I really love Ren for the ability to offset a little bit of my carbon footprint and maybe help a few forests get replanted in the process. And the first 100 people to sign up using the link below will get their first month of their Ren subscription covered for free. Number two, diet and poop. This is something that all snakes do. They all eat, they're all carnivores, and they all poop. And generally, the poop of a carnivore is going to stink a lot more than the poop of a herbivore, or basically anything else, an omnivore, for example, because, well, they're breaking down tissue, they're breaking down bone, and that kind of smells terrible when it comes out the other side. Eat six salads in a row, and then, uh, this is, where is this going, Adam? You know exactly where it's going, and compare it with six steaks in a row. And tell me how it goes for you. But, hog noses, sometimes, although they have a crazy food drive, we talked about that earlier, there are certain hog nose snakes that take forever to get eating. I don't know why that is, it just, that is a fact. And there are some that even fail to thrive because they're so reluctant to eat and they don't even make it out of a few months and they just basically starve to death. No matter how much you try to force feed them or assist feed them, they just never want to eat. And there are some that just eat right out of the egg, no problem. And then there's others that are in betweeners where it takes a little bit of effort, but once they're on, they're good. And then there's ones like Red here, where I bought her, she took one meal. This was, I bought her in October and she hasn't eaten since. So this week we're gonna try again and start assist feeding if necessary, but she hasn't really lost any weight. She's lost two grams. So nothing to worry about. Hognose snakes sometimes don't eat, but again, unless they're losing weight, don't worry about it. Care guide up here. You can watch a care guide. Now poop. Okay, the poop smells worse than any snake that I have. I don't know why they stink so bad. Sorry, no, Dumal's boas are worse. Dumal's boa poop is some of the most disgusting, stinky, gross stuff I've ever seen ever. It is it just, we were in Madagascar two weeks ago, right? And I walked up under this tree and I could smell that there was a Dumal's boa there because I could smell the poop. It's like ingrained into my brain what it's, it's like PTSD. As soon as I walked under that tree, like, oh no, I have to scrape poop out of an enclosure. However, I would give a close second to the hognose snake. I don't know why it stinks so bad, but it's another one of those things where you walk into your house and you know immediately. You don't have to be in the reptile room. You don't have to be around the snake. If you walk into your house and this thing has pooped while you're gone, you're gonna know about it. It's gonna stink. So that might be a deterrent because there are certain people that don't want animals that stink. A lot of people don't have ferrets for this reason. People don't even have dogs for this reason. And that's why they get reptiles because reptiles don't stink. And that's true. There is no odor from this animal, but there is an odor when it does a poopy poop in its enclosure. Stinks real bad. And number one, just their size and structure. Now this is not a full grown hognose snake. The reason I don't have my full grown hognose snakes out is because it's breeding season right now. And for whatever reason, they just wanna eat everything. So as soon as I take Ekans out or I take the males out, it doesn't matter, right? Any of the full grown ones are gonna try to eat my hands. This girl here is not big enough to breed yet. I would say she's about 120 grams. Females breed at 250. So look at her compared to Ekans. There is a clear difference. Ekans is about two, two and a half times the size of this animal, and that's how big they get. Females are gonna get somewhere around three feet if you get a big one, two and a half, three feet. Males are probably gonna top out at about a foot and a half, 18 inches. So they're not a big animal at all. I would definitely not consider them that, but I think that's probably an issue for some people because they want something that is a little bit more substantial. And if they want a substantial animal, then you don't want a hognose snake. Sure, they're heavy bodied, they can be fat boys, but they're definitely not going to be as big as like, I don't know, a boa or a python or something like that. Now, even if you want a colubrid, if you're a colubrid type person, then maybe you want a corn snake because corn snakes can get five feet plus. These guys will never be five feet plus. If you really love hognose snakes, but you want something bigger, get a Madagascan giant hognose snake. 
these animals are freaking huge. We saw them in Madagascar last week. I couldn't even believe what I was looking at, and this wasn't even as big as they get. Now, of course, you're not gonna get the same temperament with a giant hognose snake. These things were trying to bite us like crazy. They tagged Dave Kaufman, almost got him in the face. Uh, video's coming next week. And the structure. Now, this animal is like, I'm kind of paying a lot more attention to it than if I had a Pikachu out or a corn snake or something like that because they don't hold on very well. They're not constrictors, right? Even things like king snakes and corn snakes are constricting type snakes. So they have the muscular structure to hold on to an animal in order to crush it. Well, not really crush it, but what they're doing is every time the animal takes a breath out, it squeezes tighter and eventually the animal goes into cardiac arrest and dies. That's how it works. These guys don't kill like that. They kill things with their venom, right? That's how they do it. So they don't constrict. And because of that, their muscular structure isn't really built for holding on to things. Not saying that they won't use some arboreal characteristics of an enclosure if you give it to them, they definitely will, but they're not going to be able to hold on to something like a python or even a different type of colubrid. They're just derpy. They fall down a lot. Even when I was taking the B-roll, I had to like drop my camera and catch the snake because they was trying to hold on to the edge of the table and it couldn't. That would never happen with a different type of colubrid, most likely. And with the size comes enclosure size. Now snakes like this, they're gonna need smaller enclosures. And of course you can give them bigger enclosures. This, I don't really know how I'm gonna spin this to be a negative. You can literally keep a male in a 20 gallon enclosure its whole life. I recommend 40s. They're bigger, they're better. I don't think that we should be using small enclosures like that anymore, or at least I don't. Uh, of course, you could use a tub system if you really wanted, but I think having a diurnal snake that comes in so many freaking morphs and colors and varieties, it's just better in an enclosure that you can see them because they will be out. They will use advantage of a light UVB, like say a 2.0 or something like that. If you give it to them, they can use a basking bulb and they will use a basking platform and they're just gonna be around for you to look at. So I think that you're better off with a bigger planted enclosure or something that's beautiful to look at. But again, that's up to you. And I already pointed to the care guide. So go there if you like more information. Okay, did it like, is it very obvious that this is one of my favorite snakes ever and they don't suck at all? Like for some people they suck, but for most people they don't. And I think that they make a perfect pet for quite a few keepers. So if you're interested in hognose snakes, I recommend doing your research. This video is not enough. Don't get one just from this. And if you want a bunch of morphs, well, this is the, I think in my opinion, the most morphs that are up and coming. Every time I blink, there's a new morph. Like what the heck is a watermelon? Come on. Like there's so many of them and even pattern morphs now, jaguars and things like that. So I think that these snakes are only gonna get more popular and hop on the train now because they're getting more expensive. So there you go. That is why hognose snakes suck kind of. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think? Do hognose snakes suck? Do you love them? Are you going to get one after this? Did I change your mind? Let me know. And as always, I want to say a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You guys know about the breeding projects. I am breeding hognose snakes this year and how you can get one once they are bred. No need to leave a comment. It's all there on Patreon. And in the next coming months, I'll let you know too. Of course, thank you so much if you follow me on Instagram. There is so much content on there that is not available anywhere else lab content with Dave Kaufman, Reptiliatus, Mike Titula, a whole bunch of stuff from Madagascar. And of course on Patreon, you get all that stuff extra early. So for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon club too. And that's it because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.